Good morning. Um, Mr. Hemsing has posted your next assignment for the week. You have to read textbook pages 457 to 459. And then he has just a few short multiple choice questions to answer about the reading. Make sure that you are looking back in the book or you're looking at your notes when you're answering the questions. Um, you have access to these materials, so you really should be scoring as best as you can. In fact, Texas had never controlled the area between the two rivers, but setting the Rio Grande as the border between Texas and Mexico would have given Texas much more land. President Polk put pressure on Mexico to accept this claim. Still, Mexico refused. The Mexican-American War Polk knew that the Mexican government needed cash. He offered money to settle the claim for the Rio Grande border. He also offered to purchase California and the rest of Mexico. Out New Mexico, outraged, Mexicans refused the offer. They did not want to cede or give up more land to the United States. Polk then changed his tactics. Hoping to provoke a Mexican attack on U.S. troops, he sent General Zachary Taylor south to the war. Oh, I'm sorry, south to the disputed land of land south of the Nueces. The Mexicans saw this as an act of war. After Mexican troops ambushed an American patrol on the land, disputed land, Polk asked Congress for a declaration of war. He claimed that Mexico had forced this war by shedding American blood upon American soil. Opposition to war. Overall, the war with Mexico was very popular among Americans. Support for the war was strongest among Southerners and Westerners who were willing to take up arms to gain more land. Many Northerners, however, argued that Polk had provoked the war. They scornfully referred to it as Mr. Polk's War and claimed that he was trying to extend slavery. Abraham Lincoln, a member of the House of Representatives from Illinois, pointed out that the land under dispute was not American soil. He held that General T Taylor's troops had invaded Mexico, not the other way around. Rebellion in California. Polk ordered troops under the command of Stephen Kearney to invade and capture Santa, Fra Santa Fe, New Mexico. From there, Kearney was to lead his troops into California. Even before Kearney's troops led, reached California, settlers near San Francisco had begun their own revolt against New Mexico. Taking up arms, they raised a grizzly bear flag and declared California an independent republic. A bold young explorer, John C. Fremont, soon took command of the Bear Flag Rebellion. He moved to join forces with U.S. troops under the command of Kearney. <clears throat> Mexico had very little military presence in California. Fremont's forces quickly captured Monterey and San Francisco. Meanwhile, General Kearney's troops captured Santa Fe and San Diego. There they united with naval units to occupy more of California. By early 1847, all of Southern California was also under American control. The Invasion of Mexico Moving south from the Rio Grande, General Zachary Taylor captured the Mexican city of Monterey. Santa Ana attacked Taylor at the Battle of Buena Vista. Though greatly outnumbered, Taylor's forces were better armed. Santa Ana retreated. An American army under General Winfield Scott captured Veracruz, an important Mexican port. Scott then marched from Veracruz to Mexico City. Scott's army forced the Mexican army into the capital. Still, Santa Ana would not surrender. Scott's campaign ended at Chapultepec, a, a stone palace above Mexico City. Like the Texans at the Alamo, the Mexicans fought bravely to defend Chapultepec. Most of them were killed. In Mexico, these young men were still honored for their bravery and patriotism. After Mexico's defeat at Chapultepec, Santa Ana left Mexico City. The Mexican capital was now in American hands. The United States had won the war. 
To learn more about the key battles in the Mexican-American War, see the Geography and History feature. Achieving Manifest Destiny Polk sent a representative, Nicholas Triss, to help General Scott negotiate a treaty with the Mexican government. Despite many difficulties, Trist negotiated the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which was signed in 1848. It formally ended the Mexican-American War. Under the treaty, Mexico recognized the annexation of Texas and ceded a vast territory to the United States. This territory, known as the Mexican Cession, included present-day California, Nevada, and Utah, as well as parts of Wyoming, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. In return, the United States paid $18 million to Mexico. In the Gadsden Purchase of 1853, the United States paid Mexico $10 million for a narrow strip of present-day Arizona and New Mexico. Manifest destiny has had been achieved. Looking back and ahead, by 1853, the United States owned all the territory that would make up the first 48 states. Not until Alaska and Hawaii joined the Union in 1959 would any states outside this area be added. Okay, so that's all you had to read for this morning. Um, Please make sure you are going back and you're answering the questions that go along with the reading on the Google form. If you have any questions, please let me know.